wow, this is everything I've been looking for in terms yeah. of like my journey of like, what is it to exist in today's mm-hmm. life? What is spirituality? And mm-hmm. how, can be, how can I be the best, best possible human being of my life? You know, because like Fantastic. through soccer, like, yeah, that was I was just trying to be the best human being I could be the best athlete. Yeah. And so I was always curious about like, what is this? Yeah. You know, what is this technology I'm living in? <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and then yoga opens up. Action. Hello, welcome everyone to the Spirit of Yoga. My name is Dave Das from the Akashi Yoga Academy. Today we're here to explore this powerful, beautiful topic called Radiantly Alive. And I'm happy to introduce our guest, Mark Laws. Mark, I feel like <laughs> when we came up with this topic, like what does it mean to be radiantly alive? Mark was like at the top of my list <laughs> of uh, <laughs> human beings that live with full presence and full radiance and full joy, both in body and mind in spirit. We're so excited and happy to welcome you here. And uh, yeah, excited to hear about your journey. Yeah. Uh, where, did it, where did it all start for you? Where did it all begin? Well, first of all, respect, Devdas. I appreciate that. And um, the, where I started this journey, let's see, I think... It reminds me of like a, a, a bamboo seed, you know, and you, you, the story is when you plant a bamboo seed and you're watering it, nothing's breaking, nothing's like growing from it. And it takes years. And then suddenly oh. something sprouts. Yeah. And then within weeks to months, it's like, whew, yeah, <laughs> it booms. <laughs> and that's, that's, I feel like that was my yoga journey. Wow. Like my yoga journey was high school, sophomore so probably around the age of 17, 16 years old. I started at almost exactly the same really? time. I didn't even know. No, that. Oh, man. Wow, cool. <laughs> and I had cool. this coach. He was like, I, I, really underst- I really got him, and I looked up to him because he's a world traveler, and, and I was born from that, like being born in England and then moving to America. And it's like New Mexico is never going to be my spot, which is where I was raised. Right. And so I, could, I, I saw his essence, and I was like, mm. oh, you're the man, and, and, and he's my coach, my assistant coach. Right. Um, I was on the varsity team as a sophomore. And one day he came up to me and he's just like, hey, why don't you come to my house? We're going to do a little yoga. I was like, what is this yoga? He's like, yeah, it's good stretching. That's the way he like uh, introduced it. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll see you at your house. So we go over there and it's a hot New Mexican summer day. And uh, we go to his backyard and we do a few poses. And I don't, I don't remember, to be honest, the poses, but I remember it was a really good stretch. Then we hung out and that was it. That was it. Maybe I use a few of those stretches in my like warm-ups for soccer. Right. But I never thought of yoga. And I just got on with my life. Years later, I come back to New Mexico because now I've moved. To, I'm going back and forth from England, playing football in England, and then coming back to the States during off season, which is usually around spring, summertime. And then I'll, uh, I'll play a little bit in America. And then I'll just catch up with whoever. And I bumped into this girl that I used to go to university with. I haven't seen her in years. And she's like, hey, you want to come to a yoga class with me? And I was like, sure, I've been wanting to try, you know, a little bit more. And I'm, I'm hearing more about it, especially like Bikram was okay. the hot thing. No yeah. pun intended, but <laughs> that's what was happening. Because there'd be the freeway and we'd be driving down the freeway. And then you can see just below, you can see the studios and then it's all glass and you can see inside. Okay. And you're just like, okay, something's going on in there. And you yeah. just see it over and over again. And then now mm. she's inviting me. And I was like, let's do it. So it's like from the first sophomore to so now it's i think about four to five years have passed and i'm doing bikram my second class maybe proper class because it's in a studio now yeah and i remember being in front of that mirror room is hot the teacher was pregnant i think there was like 50 students in there and i remember i remember like i was just so hot bro i was (laughs) dying and I was like, it was touching, it was like touching the side of me that I love when it comes to like athletics of like just the inner chat. I'm just like, no, Mark, you got this. You could do it. Like you can push through, <laughs> which isn't really the balance of yoga. But at that moment, it was, it was speaking necessary. to my, com- yeah, my competitive <laughs> essence. And then I look across the room and I see the teacher. She's by the doorway and she just cracks open the door for herself to get that nice breeze. And I'm like, I can't even taste it or feel it, but I'm just like trying to live through it. I'm just like, oh my God, I bet that feels so good. <laughs> Focus, Mark. Focus, Mark. <laughs> and that was my second class. <laughs> and so every once in a while, I would like, I would dot into Bikram because it's like, no matter right. where I went in the world, I knew what I was getting. Sure. Right? Sure. And um, 
then there was a moment. Now we're probably six years, maybe seven years later. Okay. And uh, a friend of mine invited me to a class. Um, I think she worked at Lululemon, and, and I was looking to be an ambassador for them. Okay. So she's like talking about inviting me into the team. And uh, she's like, let me take you to this class. Stuart Gilchrist, London. He still teaches this day. He's an OG. I think he's been teaching for 30 years. Scotsman, dreadlocks, piercing bluish green eyes, and just like <laughs> hardcore <laughs> fire. His classes are fire. And I'm in that class, and this is probably the first proper class that I've been in where it's like strong asana, like kind of Ashtanga base. Yeah. And um, the philosophy in the class, talking mostly about ego in this particular class. And then also he's just like, okay, do this, do this, do that. And I'm like, that's not possible. And I look around <laughs> for a minute and I'm seeing handstands and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, for a moment, I just, I would just watch. Wow. And just be in awe. And I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. And as I'm saying, wow, another part of me is just like that competitive side of just like, I could do that one day. <laughs> I could be better than anybody in this class. And as I'm thinking that, he's speaking about the ego. And I'm just like, oh my God, that's me. And it just opened up a whole new world for me after that class. I'm just Amazing. like, this is what yoga is. Wow, this is everything I've been looking for in terms yeah. of like my journey of like, what is it to exist in today's mm -hmm. life? What is spirituality? And mm -hmm. how, can be, how can I be the best, best possible human being of my life? You know? Because like Epic. through soccer, like yeah. that was... I was just trying to be the best human being I could be, the best athlete. Yeah. And so I was always curious about like, what is this? Yeah. You know, what is this technology I'm living in? <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> and, that, and then yoga opens up. So that that's kind of like, yeah, how I got into yoga. Amazing. Like I feel like that that sentence about what is this technology? What does this thing do? I remember when I first discovered yoga, I felt like it was like someone had given me the instruction manual to my car. And I was like, I finally understand. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> A whole new world opening up. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I was so thankful that that happened. I was just like, wow, someone wrote a manual. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, that's brilliant. Like, our ancestors took the time exactly. to be like, let me like jot this down. This is what I've got I'm some notes for right? you. <laughs> <laughs> I go enjoy life. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so fun. Yeah, so man. Fun. Um, and then what? Uh, well, first of all, I should say as as Mark was telling the story about you know being surrounded by people doing handstands, I was thinking about a Zoom call from our 300 hour course. We have the privilege of having Mark on our 300 hour course, which is a huge blessing. Yeah. Mark. We get constant comments and feedback from our community, just sending you big props and big love and just in full celebration. Nice. Well, big love back to you guys. Um, and we were at a Zoom call one day and the kind of topic of discussion was like basically Mark's physical, like the amazingness of Mark's physical practice. Mm. And people were like, I'm not sure I can ever get there. And I was like, yeah. I'm also not sure I can ever get there. <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like you, it's such a nice, like, well, I should put it a different way and say, when we practiced together, when we were in Changu that day, Mark was like doing his, uh, his normal class for GLOW. Mm. And I just said, can I hide in the back and practice with you? I remember that. And yeah. I felt like exactly what you shared just now that you really embody. Mm. It's like you have a super advanced practice, a super beautiful practice, like poetry in motion, just watching you on the mat, mm. but with such a like clean energy, just mm. like not like, hey, you know, I can do this, <laughs> like, ah, but just so inviting and so welcoming and so present. Mm. Um, so what happened in the journey from the competitive mindset of I can do this in, in the class to really embodying what it means to kind of be a teacher in the fullest sense of the word, like, mm. you know, prowess in your body and yet such a softness and beauty and, mm. and presence in your heart. Mm. Um, I love that. What, what brought that? That's such a beautiful question, man. Um, there's all kinds of things, all kinds of uh, memories popping up. Mm. Of, um, cause I, I also think that class in general was an eye opener of just like as my mind was spinning, because yeah. like our whole reality is based on the way we listen. 
Sure. Our whole communication is based on the way we listen, wow. not what we say, but where, what we're listening from, right? Yeah. And so to, to hear Stuart Gilchrist talk about ego as I'm going through the process and be like, oh my gosh, like I'm giving away my energy. Yeah. And rather than using this vessel that's beside me as inspiration, I'm using it as competition. Right. So then if I want to rise, I'm, I'm rising to a limit versus like, what, wow. do, what can I expand into? Like, who, what's the true me? Versus like comparing myself to someone else. So that happened in the moment. Yeah. And then, and then I feel like Mark Whitwell is coming up for me as well. It's like you, you and I b- yeah. both know more. Great friend. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful human being. And, and he talks about, you know, the inhale strength receiving in sight. Mm. And for me, it's like the exhale is like the invitation of what's available. So it's like the strength meets softness. Yeah. And so in my life, like over time, it's evolved to like, how can I embody the strength and softness at the same time? Yeah. And so that's. It comes out in my living. It comes out in my practice because I feel like that is the practice is yep. my life. Right. Right. It's like right. and vice versa. Yeah. And so when it comes to like these approaches of things that I find inspirational, like hand balances, not only do I find them inspirational, I find them extremely fun. Yeah. Me too. It's just, <laughs> right. It's just like little kids, like we love to go on our hands. We of love course. to do wheels. It's just like I haven't changed. Right. Yeah. And I just I'm I'm in awe of like. Another name that's coming up for me is Dylan Werner. He's like, uh, his asana practice is just godly, wow. like in human form. And I'm just like, that's beautiful. Like, what is, what is his journey right. that makes it so beautiful and smooth and almost mastery physically? Mm-hmm. And I wonder what's happening within him. Yeah. And then we'll have conversations about it or I'll read about it. And I'm just like, that's what I'm talking about. It's the inspiration. It's the yeah. curiosity yeah. that really drives me. Football was the same, w- same way. That was my first yeah. philosophy teacher. Wow. Just learning of self was through the vessel of the game of football. Amazing. It was an art. It was a spiritual practice. Yeah. And I got to learn so much about myself. And then to have yoga was like uh, a larger spectrum of self-discovery. Right. That fit perfectly in with my football. Wow. And um, yeah, and it just felt like a, a, the next segue of just like, ah, it's, it's already written here. Yeah. You know, the science and the art's already available. Yeah. And then where can I sink my teeth into it and, and embody especially when it comes to sharing, like I, I want to embody the things I'm talking about. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Like how can I share it if I don't yeah. really feel it? Feel it. Yeah, it. it doesn't feel Exude authentic. It. Yeah, you know? exactly. And so that's, that's definitely my practice. Now I think my vessel is like, yes, I'm still, yoga is always a part of me and, and mm. teaching it's also keeping it alive for me and yep. the curiosity of self. But now we both have children yeah. and that's a whole nother yoga practice. Right. So just like, right wow this is life yeah thank you my little sage you know <laughs> his name is sage by the way he's, he's three years old and i'm just like thank you my man it's just like he's amazing <laughs> like mark Wilwell. you remember when he would say like when i was with him in, in fiji and he, he would start every class he'd be like all right does anybody have anything they want to talk about or should we go for a walk on the beach and i was just waiting i was like come on like seriously let's go have a walk on the beach because basically what he's saying is like should we try to figure out more about ourselves and talk right. about spiritual um, challenges? Right. Or should we just go live life? Because that's what, <laughs> that's what we came to do. And not once did someone did the entire unanimously say, let's go for a walk on the beach. Interesting. And I was huh? like, Sage, for me, is a walk on the beach. Yeah. He's like, look, some eyes, like, like your daughter. Like, yeah. come on, daddy, let's play. Yeah. Like, I'm doing some serious stuff yeah. over here. He's just like, <laughs> listen. <laughs> He's like, come on. <laughs> really? Look in my eyes. And you're just like, oh, I love you so much. Let's go play. <laughs> I'm coming to your world. What a fabulous, uh, wow, what a fabulous segue and way of looking. Like, um, so do you feel like, like, what was the relationship between your football and your yoga? Like, do you, like, because I know we actually have some people in our community that are our professional athletes mm. that are going through probably something very similar to you on your journey. Mm. Like, did you feel that they complemented each other? Do you feel like they were in conflict with one another? Like, what was that? Yeah, I feel like, like, so there's football, there's yoga, and there's my son, Sage, and then a new baby on the way. Like, I would put all of those together because the, I guess the football aspect, aspect of it is it's completely complementing. Yeah. It depends on the intention. Sure. And if I want to access the most power, it yeah. actually comes from a very loving place. Yeah. It's not high competition or trying yeah. to beat people up or just be the best. It's just yeah. like self-discovery of like, 
yeah. what can I do with this thing? Yeah. And then I would be surprised with yeah. what I can do in football. And then I'd be surprised on what I can do in asana. And then I'd be surprised yeah. on what me and Sage are doing and how much fun we're having and just being able to let loose and time doesn't exist. So I'm just like, I'm always reminded, Beautiful. right? Beautiful. Of like, what is yoga? Yeah. It's just union. It's just like, well, I'm living in union. Yeah. I'm, I'm an embodiment of yoga yeah. in moments. And sometimes yeah. like, I can get pulled in my energy can leak and then, then there's a learning because yeah. all pain is trying to indicate that there's something that needs Definitely. to be looked at. Definitely. And then I can, and then I can be with that. <laughs> you're lighting me up, bro. <laughs> epic. epic. I absolutely love it. Um, Your questions are sublime. <laughs> Thanks for taking me on this journey, man. It's like loving my life so much more. It's like, wow, I, I loved it like this much. Now it's like, <laughs> this is the, Ah, this is the natural joy, right? This is the the yoga that you were just so beautifully sharing with us um, on the field, on the mat, in the playroom, on a sunny day, on a cloudy day, and all the other days in between. You know, it's just like, where can I find my my connectedness? And, you know, that's in a weird way. I feel like that's one of the things that I loved about yoga when I very first found it was like, it's like, where am I going to go to to find this thing? It's like, right here. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I don't need any anything. Really. Yeah. Like, it's just my opportunity to reflect and to be and to experience. And, mm. you know, it doesn't require anything fancy. Yeah. Um, it's just the mat and, and your heart and the adventure begins. Right. And there's something so, I don't know, profound or beautiful or magical about. And, you know, kind of my teacher in India used to say, um, the ashram of this world that you're looking for is your own heart. Mm. It's like, where do you have to go? Do you mm. have to go to some place to kind of participate in this? No. It's like it's happening right here, right, right. now. It's, it's like you're sharing about mark Whitwell on the beach like you guys want to go to the beach it's just like it's right now it's ever unfolding it's uh it's absolutely present and it's not far away yeah. it's right here yeah um and there's kind of a magic that unfolds with that yeah it's, it's interesting like, right it's like we go on this like um rite of passage or what it, what, it, what is it called like the i can't remember what it's called but it's a, a rite of passage and I guess sometimes we just have to go on those yeah, outer journeys to definitely. rediscover the inner. Definitely. Uh, and just evolve, expand. Yeah. yeah. It's an yeah. Inter interesting life. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I, always, I also like sometimes wonder um, like if that process isn't somehow just built into creation in some way. It's like mm. you have to have your moment of kind of like, <laughs> mm, mm. and then you're like wait a minute like maybe there's something that can lift me in this journey that i can share with others that i can um you know go on go on the upside of that journey the upswing of that journey the radiance side of the journey um but yeah it's interesting to see like also, I sometimes wonder about societies, if that's not the same. Like when a society is having a really challenging moment and they're not doing very well and they're not thriving, mm -hmm. it's almost like that's required mm -hmm. so that people can go, oh, that's not really working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I got to try something else. Yeah. Um, beautiful. I think it's ingrained in, in nature. Yeah. Like and and everything else is an expansion of nature. So it's like why wouldn't yeah. it re why wouldn't it follow the same laws? Yeah. Exactly. You know, like all the trees, all the flowers, yeah. like everything goes through yeah. a struggle. Exactly. And then blossoms into something and reaches to the sun and yeah. does its dance and you it's know the same, man. as it's yeah. Exactly. I feel I, I like that because it makes me think of like <clears throat> what I'm I'm changing a few words in my life of like, you know, mastering my mind or mastering this and that. For me, that kind of inclines like I'm trying to control something. Yeah. And I'm like, how can I just befriend it? Can I just build a better relationship with it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And just, just accept it as it is. Yeah. It's going to hurt a little bit or it's going to be yeah. uncomfortable. But at least I can just be with what it, what's really there. 
you noticing like because there were moments where i'm just like not yeah and i'm just like i will not look at it or i'm maybe hiding from it and it's it's almost spiritual bypass yeah and then you're just like oh shit oh, okay <laughs> all right <laughs> flow through me yeah and now wise enough like i'm not saying that i'll never go through any of it again because i still do but wise enough to know like i'm gonna sit through this yeah and at the end of it i know there's something bright mm. and expansive on the other side beautiful and it's just like it helps you know it's yeah. kind of like seeing like you're waiting for a bus or the the, the tube or a yeah. subway and you're just like oh it's coming in five minutes, five minutes. versus Can't like you're sitting there and you're like <laughs> when is it gonna arrive <laughs> i feel like yoga kind of gives you a little timer just like don't worry five exactly. minutes <laughs> exactly exactly amazing amazing um beautiful so i feel like your embodiment of like the physical side of yoga is so powerful and so strong. And I'm sure that many people would love to know, do you have any kind of like tips and radiance for that from that side? Like what's your, what's been your approach to developing radiance on the physical level? On the physical level, I, I suppose it's always been ingrained in me just as an athlete. I like yeah. to be stronger. I, I, I know the way it feels yeah. to be strong yeah. and be like, everything changes like the posture like yeah the mentality it's like that yeah. mind body connection mm. is real yeah and i feel like just knowing my dad he came to visit me two months ago and he stayed for a month a few days in he's like hey mark so he's 71 now what's this yoga this yoga stuff because he knows i teach, his yo teach right. yoga but he's never never done it okay so now he's inquiring what is this yoga stuff it's like come on dad let's go let's go to your room i'll show you some <laughs> So we did like maybe a five to seven minute class. Yeah. He was just like, just rinsed. He was just like, that was tough. And I was like, and I also got to see my dad in a different light of just like, he's, a, he's the first one to take me to a gym. Oh, wow. And that man was like solid. Like he yeah. was like, he was like a, a chiseled God, you know, in, in wow. Italy, in Rome. Right. And wow. then, and now he's like seven minute practice is enough. Yeah. Right. So we had a few of those. And then let's say week two and a half, he comes into the kitchen. He's got a little bit of sweat just dripping down. I was like, Daddy, you all right? You're kind of puffing kind of hard. He's like, Whew. just found myself a yoga class on YouTube. It's like 40 <laughs> minutes and 10 minute segments. So I was like, oh, man, because he got a taste of how good he felt. Yeah. Then now he's just like seeking it for himself. For I'm himself. like, I'm just going to go do it because I know how good it made me feel. And it's making me feel better. Wow. You know, it's like that is one of my, I guess, driving forces or yeah. like what gives me radiance is like, I know how it feels and I like feeling yeah. like that. And I yeah. know how it doesn't feel if I don't right. do some sort of like right. physical practice or yeah. asana. Yeah. And then it's just like, I noticed like in any challenge in the sport, it's like sport was a theater. The yoga mat is a theater where we get to act out things and learn about ourselves and what yes. our patterns are. Yes. And so if there's something that I'm trying to learn or build towards, I'm learning again, like, to be with the flow and nature it's like yeah to hopefully one day not even have to use the word patience because i'm just in the flow right yeah. and it's going to arrive when it yeah. arrives yeah because that's how it always does yeah. like oh shoot i'm in handstand all of a sudden yeah when did that happen yeah and that's how it really is it's like all the other stuff yeah. is just extra all the stories is, it's yeah. not needed exactly in fact they're blocks Beautiful. right and if those blocks are available then i can look at yeah. it acknowledge it and choose something different yeah and so i think that's what that's my, that's where my radiance comes from is just is knowing I that it. i love it you know wow epic 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 you know i have a story about patience that just like something that happened to me in my life that touched me so profoundly i was up in the first nations community in canada and this uh this beautiful first nations elder was sitting with us and talking to us about her experience and she said um, she had a son that was a professional snowboarder and it was about to be like a, you know, a big meet and it was a serious thing. It was like his next step forward in his career. And they went out to the car like really early in the morning because they had to drive up to the, to the ski resort. And they had everything ready. They packed the car. Everything was finished. And suddenly the car door just wouldn't open. None of them. Like, and they had the key. They had everything. And they were all just like, you know, stressed out of their minds, just like, Stuck inside Dude, the car. No, outside, outside, right. trying to get in. Like everything was packed, they couldn't get oh, in the car. No. And every, it's like supposed to be working. They had everything that they needed for it to work. Uh -huh. It just wasn't working. 
and they're just like, oh, man, like, you know, the meat's coming, and we're going to be late, and, like, everybody's fully stressed out. And then suddenly, like, a few minutes later, they go back, and the door just opens by itself. And they're like, okay, everybody in the car, like, (laughs) let's go. Everybody hops in the car. They get on the road. They're driving down the road. And like an hour into their drive, this police officer stops them. Mm. And he goes, oh, you guys, you are so lucky. Like an avalanche just came down here. If you'd come three minutes earlier, you'd all be dead. Oh, man. And she she just said, it was just like, I will never rush again. Mm. Like, I will never say, you know, like push it forward. Mm. Rather just relax, enjoy, mm. um, be patient, be present. Mm. Um, because that pushing, you know, in that situation would have been a, a heavy Completely. Count. Completely. So, yeah, it's a. Uh, I feel like that quality of patience in the modern world is a really hard quality to develop in mm. some way because mm. it's like the focus of the world is is not that right mm. it's like push get forward go ahead mm. like you know um and just somehow on the yoga mat just being able and in life just being able to kind of like take those brief steps back kind of creates the the, the possibility of something really magical mm-hmm. um because you're just more in that receptive space and less in the space of, you know, what can I do and, and mm-hmm. how to move forward and how to get things done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really so much appreciate your your sharing on patience. Yeah. I, I love it. It's yeah. really powerful. I want to eliminate that. There's a few words yeah. I want to eliminate, but that would be, when, when I can eliminate that, then I know I've embodied yeah. timelessness. Wow. And then, then I'm in my city, if you like. It's complete. It's right. It drives <laughs> spontaneously. I don't know. Maybe this lifetime we'll see. Definitely. But at least definitely. I'm a, at least I'm aware of it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 like those stories of like that is just like trusting in the cosmos, like trusting yeah. in like the universe of just like there is there is a grand orchestration of things that are all connected and so powerfully. And you know, at moments you see it just like with such clarity. It's mm-hmm. like a Swiss watch. You're mm-hmm. just like what? Like, yeah everything all the plants all <laughs> the animals the sun the rain the stars the moon <laughs> it's like what right um and then at times it's like kind of like you have to remind yourself a little bit yeah. um of the vast intelligence that's present yeah. in in life naturally completely like when you when you find yourself in the moments where you're like needing a reminder mm mm-hmm what's your go-to like where where do you go for for finding that reminder wow that's a good question like because there's different levels to that right is i have the yoga practice yeah which always brings me there yeah or or maybe a nice walk and it's meditative and i'm just present yeah and then there's there's moments where you're in the moment yeah and i think that takes a lot of practice and also just awareness of just like okay it's happening now What's happening inside of me? What's the feeling? What's the emotion? Is there any body sensations? Mm. What's the story that's being played out in my mind right now? Yeah. And all that happens so quickly, it's like in one breath. So if I was to take one breath and just be with that for a moment, and then maybe even just take a moment just to look around, just, yeah. there's definitely something beautiful like in my yeah. surroundings. Yeah. It could be the person right in front of me and just be like, yeah. oh gosh. Like my little boy Sage, it's just like yeah. if I'm flustered and I just look into his eyes and he's looking into my eyes with so much love, I'm just like, ah, it's all thanks fine. for bringing me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, little master. <laughs> and it's, 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 I think those are my tools at the moment, you know, and so, sometimes yeah. they will slip and then I have to just bring myself back later. Yeah. But um, I feel like over time you start to collect these tools and get to know oneself. Yeah. Where it's just like you just get more refined with it. Yeah. Until the until the next challenge, until the next challenge, because that's when we really get to know ourselves. Yeah. You know, definitely. is in those moments. Definitely. Yeah. So I think I hope I answered your question. Definitely. Beyond, beyond, beyond. Um, you have I, some. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. For, for Radiance, um, I feel like. You probably know all kinds of crazy secrets. 
I'm serious. I'm <laughs> you want to know my he's, secrets? He's looking, he's looking at the camera like, oh, man, I, like <laughs> you can, <laughs> there's certain things that are boundaries, which is fine. But you probably have some non-boundaries too. Like uh, Mark and I, just before we came for this podcast, we went in the cold bath. Right? Radiance. And it, it's just like, it's it's immediate radiance. Completely. It's just come out just like, okay, oh, wow, like fresh, 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 fresh. Um, any tips or tricks from from that side? Wow. For when I was looking at the camera, I was also looking at the the tea set. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, we gotta get and going with that. So that's, you, you that's, tell us your secrets, and I'll get some tea going. That's radiance, baby, right there. <laughs> Especially when you <laughs> when Dev Doss is like, "What tea should we have?" and he explains this one in particular, and his face lights up so brightly, I'm just like, "I'll have what he's having." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So we're, we're about to go on a journey, but I, I feel like there's. Hmm. There's so many tools, I guess, for what what we're describing as radiance in my life. Yeah. Tea's definitely one of them. Mm. To take a moment, especially when when I'm talking about, I guess it could be tea. Like, just get your bag out. Like the British are really big on that. I used to live in, like, I was yeah. born in England, and I went back when I was probably 19. And everything's solved by a cup of tea. Would you like a cuppa? Yeah. Just sit down and talk. Yeah. And there's loads of science of just being able to hold. A warm cup warm, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah, actually yeah. more um engaged with somebody else in conversation more warming and yeah. open yeah. yeah and uh and then there's the way we drink tea which is my preferred way of just like it mm. takes presence it's it, it has this beautiful etiquette about it that mm. which i love about the japanese culture yeah even though it's most teas come out of china and yeah and um in india is just like this whole setup of just like taking time that's it taking time yeah and so it's like what are those things that bring me back yeah. to taking time mm. and it can be like sometimes I'll, like, I'll go into a restaurant creme brulee is on the menu tiramisu if it's an italian restaurant certain things that i just love i'm like i open the menu from the back it's like i'll have the tiramisu please and they're like huh i was like yes have that before dinner <laughs> just in case i don't have enough room it's like, but Mark, it's like, I get the unhealthy look sometimes, but also they're looking at me like, but you're so healthy. It's like, well, let's talk about feeding the soul. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That so, is a fabulous, I have a, I have a, a funny story about that one too. A friend of mine once was at a yoga retreat and this woman was like, he had a kind of a mild cold and this woman across the table was like, you know, I don't think you should really be eating ice cream because like ice cream builds mucus and you've got a cold and this mucus is going to be really bad. <laughs> he turns to her and he said, you know, I really like to eat the things that make me want to keep living. <laughs> yes, man. And I, I Kindred just soul. Like there's something to your, to your methodology. Like completely, you know, start, start with what you love yeah um and also like maybe also in that sense like start with inspiration like mm. what's your what's your take on um how do you stay with your inspiration how do you stay connected to, to the flow of ideas to opening new things i i feel like uh, mark and i have been friends for a while and every time mark comes He's got some amazing, cool, fun thing happening in your life. It's mm. so beautiful. It's like mm. there's always some heart to heart sharing that's just like that gets me excited. Like yeah. I'm just like, yeah, epic. Like awesome. You're 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 just going for it. Right. Um, in the most beautiful way. So, you know, how do you how do you facilitate that? I think through through you. That's definitely one of them. Like our connection and other connections that I have that are similar to ours is just like yeah. That's inspiration to be like, wow, like to see other people's lives and the way they're living mm. um, allows me to reflect. Yeah. Um, and then also just uh, so there's that which is right in front of me. And then there's yeah. the ether that right. I think we're all connected to that. Just right. like things come through you and you're right. just like, whoa, that'd be amazing. How big yeah. can I dream? Yeah. And spending time with that. Yeah. And I, I use I seem to use both of those just yeah. to keep me fueled up like fire for inspiration because there's just so much out there that's so powerful it's beautiful that's so powerful and like do you have a specific methodology that you use or for connecting to the eater or you just feel like at this time like you're just naturally connected and you 
Yeah, I think I think there's many ways, right? Like some is is like it just arrives spontaneously. Yeah. Some of it's through dreams. Yeah. Some of it's like actually taking time to like whip out a workbook and ask yourself yeah. deep open questions. Yeah. Or even doing someone else's work where they yeah. bring the questions to you. Yeah. And you just take a moment. Like we're yeah. all like what are the what are the some of the things I've done in the past year? Like I, I rented a, a dark room that they have here in Ubud. Yeah. Three nights in the dark room. Like Amazing. you can't see anything. Amazing. Right? It's completely dark. You're not going anywhere for three nights and four days. Yeah. And it's just like just sitting with myself. Like if I, when I was a younger person, that's that scared the shit out of me. Right. <laughs> just to be by myself. Yeah. But now I'm just like, it's so welcoming because there's just so much juice there. And, and then also yeah. it's like I spend back in the day, I'd spend so much time with others getting to know them. And it's like, when do I do that with myself and get to know myself and have yeah. that conversation? Because I, I clearly hear a conversation happening within me. Yeah. But sometimes I'm not part of the conversation. Yeah. So I want to be part of the conversation. Let's wow. be friends. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'll like I'll do that. That's that's what meditation is for me sometimes, or just dreaming or being in contemplation with thought. Yeah. Or renting a dark room and just being like sitting with my eyes closed, at least I think they're closed, and then I open them, I'm like, oh, um, same, same. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man. And just witnessing it. And just like there's just so much inspiration in that. And I'm like, okay, wow, what a powerful um power that we have like right. superpower that we have to literally bring things from ether to from nothing yeah into the physical world it's incredible we're co-creators like yeah what do you want to do with that yeah it's like, well there's there's not enough time in life no. <laughs> let's go <laughs> <laughs> which also makes me sad sometimes but also like you know real life sad like i can go to the future and be like oh one day i'm gonna have to go and just like what about all the people i love what about my little boy and my wife what about yeah. It's like, okay, Mark, come back. Yeah. yeah that's just now. the reality of it. Now <laughs> let's come back here. Yeah, that's real for me, you know? And it also yeah. like, th also that also inspires me. I'm just like, I'm just ticking, dude. Yeah. Like I'm 41 right now. I'm, I had this conversation yesterday with a friend. We were all doing acro. And I was like, like, Mark, what's, what's next for you? And I was like, cause I just love this space that I was at called uh, Nirvana in mm -hmm. Changu. Mm -hmm. Beautiful place to train and move and all these other beautiful people within the community just like instant friends just people that are just so into like yeah. what they're doing and wanting to share with each other mm. it, it's, it's it was impressive and i was just like this is the place where i would spend a lot of my time yeah if i had a membership here and i'm thinking about doing that and so i was like i was like i'm 41 now and i i know that i have about 20 or 30 years of ultimate like power in my, this physical body right and then it's going to leave me like my yeah. father and my ancestors have taught me that it's like i'm not going to get away from it I'm not going right. to be some sort of special one that doesn't age. Right. So it's like, what do I want to do with these right. these last few years of yeah. having so much physical power? Yeah. It's like, well, I'm, I got to learn some more stuff. I want to move. I want to like yeah. dance. I want to go do things physically. Yeah. Until I'm, I have to, and, and then eventually, then I have to move slower. So it's just like that inspires me to like, okay, what's what's next? Yeah. What's next on the bucket list? Beautiful. You know? Beautiful. And what's next on the like? As you as you kind of bring that up, then I feel like okay. But then, like the real the real science of yoga is, as you age, you become like that woman that I was talking about on the coast up in the First Nations in in Canada. It's like mm -hmm. you become an elder basically, mm -hmm. and an elder has some spiritual responsibility actually mm -hmm. to spread their knowledge, their wisdom, their joy, their light, their connectedness to life mm -hmm. um, you know i feel like that's a so maybe that's a, a question is like what do you do to connect to your spirit Ooh, what do i do to connect to my spirit well uh, let's connect with the spirit yeah. of the tea to help us spirit connect to the, the spirit tea. thank you for sharing thank this you, thank you thank you so honored <sighs> yeah that's special <laughs> this is a, a puer by the way everybody yeah yeah it's actually called airplane probably some of you have heard burkhardt on the graduation calls he's always telling people okay we start at uh you know cloud number seven like but by the time we finish 28 30 38 40 like you, you we're gonna be up <laughs> altitude in the like, we're, gonna, we're, we're going up and I think, brother, we're we're going up. <laughs> uh, I agree, man. <laughs> Radiance right here in a cup. Oh my gosh, keep that flowing. 
Wow. I love these questions. Just take a moment just to ponder like it, it, it changes the speed of life. Mm. These types of questions about what have I, what have I been up to? Yeah. You know, how can I break this down? So through my words, maybe other people can understand what's going on in my life. And in that, it's like you spoke about the elder and I'm just like, I feel like we all have that essence of it doesn't have to be a responsibility, but just the, of sharing, because I also feel that sharing's not all transmuted through words or being in front of a class but the right. way someone's living like you can see when someone's living a certain way and you're just like you'll see them walking past and you'll be like whoa i like the way they're living there's yeah. something and it changes you exactly right exactly and I, I feel like as i get older there's definitely the things that i would hear from ones before me of just like oh now i get it you know yeah. like being a going tra um transition from man to father yeah or boy to man or eventually into being an elder and just like yeah. watching my pops be 71 i'm just like oh that's where i'm going yeah okay and then just i like i like to future plan my my mind just goes there I'm just like okay if this is what it looks like then what do i want to do now as yeah. i know i'm approaching that yeah so kind of like i've always done that wherever i go and that's like kind of like my inspiration but also gives me an opportunity to choose my direction more clearly and with yeah. more force yeah um because i know what i don't want and i know what i do want yeah I especially know what I don't want. Yeah. And sometimes I don't always know what I do want. Yeah. But it helps to know what I don't want. And in terms of like, I guess the spiritual essence, it, it comes back for me. I, I feel like, like my yoga practice is, I think geared more towards like the ideas of Tantra of like, I want to embody this life yeah. as much as possible. Beautiful. I don't want to like, be outside of my body too much i don't want to yeah. be outside of the moments i want to be here i want to like i yeah. feel like that's the whole point yeah you know i want to enjoy like this gift of the senses and like yeah. it feels like it's a gift of just like hey go enjoy one of the most pleasurable experiences you're ever gonna have you know this is my soul having the experience and i'm just like these senses are incredible like yeah come on i just sipped this amazing tea and yeah. i'm having these conversations and the weather feels a certain way on my yeah. skin and to touch somebody else and to make yeah. love and it's just like like there's 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 certain things that it's just like it's a pleasure to yeah, live right definitely. it's like to eat yeah i would say it's a pleasure definitely. to make love that's procreation i would definitely. say that's pleasure definitely. to breathe well yeah. that's an absolute that's pleasure a, that's a it's like, <laughs> oh, let's take a deep breath exactly. you know it's like exactly. it's such a pleasure it's just like it, i feel like that's life's design yeah and then there's other things that are just like okay well if sometimes you fall out of pleasure which is a definite possibility then it's like this is pain and these are these are like the boundaries of just like hey there's something that just needs to be looked at so you can come back to embodying right. a yoga or a, a pleasure bliss yeah, yeah. you know yeah. it's not like uh it's not uh perverted and it's not um uh what's the word i'm looking for like uh it feels like it's balanced and not right. overindulged right right you know like I've, I've i've been to that spectrum at least for my boundaries of just yeah. like overindulging yeah or over decadence and then yeah. the other side of just like nothing yeah and it's just like well i don't like that i don't like that so it's like somewhere in the middle yeah just like and it's just perfect and it just it feels like it's sustainable yeah you know yeah and i like that i like i like it's almost like hippie and bougie at the same time <laughs> <laughs> sutras which i know that you also like a lot right the mm. tantric scripture of um, bhairava tantra yeah and uh vijnana bhairava tantra and i was so struck in that scripture by how it's like 100 for those that don't know it's 112 techniques for enlightenment but what I loved about it is some of the techniques are just so ridiculously simple. Mm. It's just like what you said. Take a nice deep breath in. That's the whole technique. Mm. <laughs> it seems so simple, right? But there is something to it, yeah. right? Like when you actually practice it, when you actually feel, wow, like I'm, I'm really breathing like a full breath and the pleasure of that and the joy of connectedness to your, mm. to your being that's happening inside that breath like Completely. there is something profoundly magical that just begins to bubble up yeah. um like I, I encourage this right now actually 
Just take a nice deep breath with us. Breathe in. Exhale it out. Was there any difference? Like I'm tingling a little bit. You might have different <laughs> sensations, but it's like. <laughs> Thank you for that, David Oz. I, I used to have this client, right? I, I used to do sports therapy in London and I had a client that she came in with extreme back pain. She had it for nine months. And this is when I was just starting to dive into like the essence of like yoga and, and breath and pranayama. And um, as we were talking, I was watching her and she's just like small breaths, nonstop, sh yep. stressed, speaking Super so stressed. fast. Yep. And so she, we come to the table, we're going to do some exercises. And I was like, you know, a little bit of manual manipulation and massage. And I was just take a deep breath. And for 30 minutes, we just, I would just cue her breath. Maybe a little bit of massage. Wow. I was like, come back, see me like either in two days or next week, up to you, whatever your schedule um, 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 allows. So she comes back next week. She's like, Mark, you fixed me. And I was like, okay, now she's ready to hear it. I was just like, you know, all we did was you just were breathing. I was like, when you first came in, it was like this. And she started to notice her breath. And she's like, oh my gosh, I'm doing it now. I was like, just take those deep breaths. Wow. And that was it. She cured herself. Wow. I didn't do anything. Wow. And I was just like, I was so moved. I was just like, wow, it's this is real. That's powerful though. Right. And and we think about like all of us, like right now, like how are you breathing? Right. When's the last time you took a nice big breath? Right. So And Ed, that's a very, very interesting sharing on many different levels. And I feel like one of them is like like sometimes I feel like if people are really in pain for a long time and it first thing it changes is their breath, but then if it is if it goes unchecked for long enough, it changes their voice, mm. which I always like you can kind of hear in some people's voice when they're in pain, mm. it's like the breath gets short yeah. and then there comes a certain like something that changes yeah, like absolutely. the quality that changes in the voice. And it always just felt to me like, wow, like so profound that she was able to find you and that you just guide her back to a deep breath. Because like you said, that can actually fix many times the entire situation, actually. But nobody ever, nobody except yogis really looks at their breath very right. much. Right. Right. That's the, that's the, my, my, my teacher in India, when he was a child, he was in the habit of looking at other people's breath. And so he would just be sitting with somebody on the bus but he'd, he, and he'd be kind of somewhat listening to their words, but not really. Like mm -hmm. mostly he'd be listening to the flow of their life force and the flow of their breath. He's a Jedi. And he's fully, I mean, he was, he was beyond, beyond, beyond. But then he said one day jokingly, and I loved it. He said, I spent my childhood observing the, the life force and the breath of other people. If I'd only turned that around. I would have become Ooh. a yogi. <laughs> oh, damn. That's deep, man. That is deep. I love it. Just I like, love it. You know. That's a beautiful saying as 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 your teacher and your guru and, and, and to for other teachers out there is like sometimes we can get into that momentum of just like we're always looking out and helping others mm -hmm. and very rarely it's like, wait, wait a second. Like, mm -hmm. how can I reflect on what I just shared? How yeah. am I doing with that? Yeah. And I guess that, that's that's what comes back to my embodiment of just yeah. like one of my tools is that just like as many times as I can remember reflecting to whatever yeah. I'm giving. Cause usually sometimes yeah. the medicine you're giving out is the medicine you need definitely, to take. Definitely, and, it's like, definitely, oh. definitely. and I'm like, thank you for that. And they don't quite get it. <laughs> I'm just like, don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the only student here. <laughs> that is so fabulous. Oh, man. That is so fabulous. What a, what a beautiful, uh, reflection and i feel like that um i mean i feel like it goes back to what you were sharing earlier it's like sometimes you completely surprise yourself and when you're teaching also like you know sometimes i get up and words are coming out of my mouth and i'm like uh, <laughs> like where exactly are those coming from but they're probably what i need to hear mm -hmm. like it's like i've created a new it's like there's a small paradigm shift happening there. It's mm -hmm. like something, some new territory. Yeah. And it's just happening to come out in that moment. And I, I love what you share. It's just like take a moment and really acknowledge that and yeah. see, hey, like these are words. These words are for me. Yeah. Um, you know, this is something that's that's meant to be for my own 
uh, benefit, not just for the benefit of the people mm. who are close to me. Yeah, I believe that. There's just, gosh, there's so many layers to this existence and our expression that it's like, I clearly know that some of my expressions aren't my own. Yeah. You know, they're like coming through me. And I, I yeah. loved when I heard, it was a TED talk by the woman that wrote Eat, Pray, Love. And she talked about the genius and how the the word genius uh, i think it came from ancient greek and it was it wasn't meant to say that you are a genius because you can't be a genius it's that the genius is something outside of you oh, and it flows through you so wow. it chooses a vessel to come through and then if you express it you express yeah. it uniquely through you yeah because if you don't express it it will find someone else because it needs to be expressed because right. it's energy right right, right? right. so therefore and this is part of like her coping uh, tools as well is that right. it's not me. Like it's, it's not me that wrote that book, but a collaboration yeah. with genius. Wow. So if people don't like it, then it's okay. Cause it's okay. not completely mine. It's the genius. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, it's golden. It's just like, and it gives back to the universe of just like, it's not all us. Yeah. There's clearly something else flowing through us. Right. You know, and I'm not the genius. It's like, right. like you're saying, these words that come out of my mouth is just like, sometimes you're just like, wow. Yeah. You know, just something just flew through you. Yep. I feel many artists like express that or feel that. They somehow know it, like on an intuitive level. Like, mm. Even John Coltrane, one of his albums, he just wouldn't take credit for the authorship of it. Mm. It's just like, no, that's like, I didn't write that. Like, it was written through me. Yeah, man. And, I happen to be there and it expressed through me in a particular way. Um, but it's not really mine in the, in the sense of the traditional word. Um, there's something beautiful. About yeah. It. It's it, for me, it's actually so free. Yeah. It's just like that reminder of like, I'm this vessel that there's all kinds of expression that comes through it. Yeah. You know, there's the, my, what I believe in is the soul. And then there's, yeah everything else that i'm connected to because i feel like we're yeah. just antennas and yeah exactly. we just tap into different frequencies that's actually what the ancient yogi said right mm. the ancient ancient yogis actually it's really hard to believe but the ancient yogi said there is no such thing as individual thought mm. like a completely individual thought separated from all other thought is mm. actually impossible it's like it's one giant web yep. and as a web or as a kind of frequency it's then what you attune to, right? Mm -hmm. Like, which channel are you listening to? Um, and, you know, there's a lot of channels in our world, in the modern world today, that are just basically like the bad channels that you would hear on the radio. Completely. <laughs> you know? It's just like, well, that's not a channel that you should be tuning into. Completely. Um, but there's also the amazing, beautiful, powerful chan channels of genius and many other things that you're talking about, which I think are, in a weird way, Sometimes I think people feel like that's something like really far away. It's not far away at all. Mm -hmm. It's like it's it's a question of receptivity and frequency, mm -hmm. right? It's like if you're open to that and you're willing to kind of like have that move through you in some way, of course it wants to express itself. It's just like you so beautifully said, like that force wants to express itself mm -hmm. like it wants to create Completely. it wants things to happen mm -hmm. and it's like it's you know it's just a matter of attunement or you know tuning into the right frequency mm -hmm. and then suddenly it's happening mm -hmm. and it, that makes it so much less personal like the um once my teacher in india was this is like my f one of my favorite stories about him he was playing a song that he hadn't played in 20 years which for a musician is like ridiculously challenging. Right. Right? It's like nobody gave him notes. Nobody gave him a paper. He just was like, I want to play this song. He's like, I haven't played this song in like 20 years. I'm going to play this song. And his fingers start moving. And you just see his smile get bigger and bigger. And bigger. <laughs> He's like, it's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and he's singing the song full power. You know, he's really just like singing with full, full, full enthusiasm and joy. And he finishes the song shoots out of his chair shoots across the room clapping like this <laughs> just like yes <laughs> and i felt like if a normal person saw that they would think something's like seriously wrong with that guy right, <laughs> you know? right. like he just did this thing and he shot across the room clapping for himself <laughs> like he, he's a total egotist but it's the opposite mm. it's just like 
he was as shocked as everybody else. Look what happened through me in this moment. Absolutely. Just like look at the beauty and the and the expression that just happened. And what a miracle me, yeah. that is. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he I was just that. in full celebration of what had happened in that natural connection of frequency. I, lo- I love that. There's a there's a word called um in ancient Greek called entheos. Okay. And an entheos is like uh, something that used to be chanted when they saw something miraculous oh, by wow. a human being. Wow. It could be anything, right? Poetry or maybe just like some sort of physical endeavor. And they they would see it and they'd be like, entheos, entheos, entheos. Wow. And it's like, that's not man. He's being possessed yeah. by God or by the yeah. divine yeah. is flowing through that person. Yeah. And we're all witnessing it. Entheos, entheos, oh. entheos. And I was like, the, the, this like technology, you know, that the that the yogis would you know, leave for us, you know, through, through transcripts. And it's like, it's all over the world. Yeah. You know, it's like, we still see these, these things today. And it's like, to give it a word is to give it power. And it's like, I have so much like respect yeah. for, for people to take the time, but also just like who, who I am in terms of this human experience. Mm. And I also love um, what you said about the, the frequency is just like, mm. like, how, how do we get into this frequency? You know, and I feel like, those are the moments where I'm just like maybe with myself or mm. I feel like it's easier in Bali. Yeah. And that's kind of why I was, I was hoping to find a place or putting that out at least into the universe. I'm just like, I need a place that's just in nature yeah. and, uh, and away from the city because yeah. I'm not, I would say I'm not practiced enough yeah. to be that no matter where I go, where the external yeah. environment can't Influence penetrate. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like to, to feel it and practice it in a place like this is just like, I have, I, I can hear myself, yeah. you know, I can, I can feel the energy or, or, you know, like all of these things that when it's loud in London and there's like yeah. all these things trying to grab my attention, there's no room for me. Right. You know, there's very little unless I'm sitting down and like taking right. the time. And, right. and that reminds me of, um, Roslyn, Mark, Mark Whitwell's amazing sidekick. And, and we were walking through Fiji, uh, to the waterfalls. And she had this moment where she's just like, we're talking about like being in nature and what it does to us. And she's like, wait a second. I'm nature. <laughs> and I was like, that's genius. And I was like, you sit down with yourself, you come back to nature. You don't have to go out to the jungle. <laughs> oh my God. It dropped for both of us. We were just, we it. had to stop in our tracks and be like, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> super powerful yeah man it's so like fun in a weird way on the spiritual path that like sometimes something like that can drop it's two words like if you take it out of context people would be like oh that's like that's nothing like Mm. that's just what do you mean (laughs) but like in the right moment in the right context it's like it's it's a full download it's like it's a it's a massive completely complete expression in that moment um, or you could even say it's like the perfect thing for that moment. It's mm. like what's meant to happen. The, the nectar that's meant to come from that moment mm. is expressed and it's just two words. Mm. Like so powerful. Yeah. Um, Transmission complete. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's why sometimes we just have to experience it for ourselves because not everything can be, not everything comes with context. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The words that we read or, yeah. Sometimes even the words that we hear. Yeah. But to go out and live your life and it's yeah. in the design. Yeah. It's genius. Yeah. Yeah. And also like, you know, I feel like the more that you are in tune with like the frequencies that you were talking about earlier, the more power comes through like even a small phrase. Mm. You know, like when I was reading this phrase from the Tantra scripture, mm. just take one inhale. But it, it was just like washing over my being, you know, it's just like, that's so simple. It's nothing, but, it, but it's everything. It's mm. like it's just, it has so much nutrients in it um, because it was written by somebody who was like experiencing yeah. that like profoundly and recognizing the depth of that. And then when you read it, whatever, like a thousand years later or however long it was, it's just, it carries that same fragrance. It's yeah. like it's it carries the I'm nature fragrance. You know, you read it and you go, ah, yeah, like, yeah, that's just right. (laughs) You're so right about that. Oh my gosh. So, so concise. 
and still transmuted. I remember reading a book of um, their Anastasia books. There's like mm-hmm. nine books yeah. by the uh, the Russian yeah. Anastasia and Vladimir who wrote them. And in the beginning of the book, they they always suggest like go find a quiet spot, get into the moment, be completely present. And I feel like what they're asking is just just prepare yourself to come to the same frequency that's transmuting this story yeah. or these scriptures. Because I, I can go and read what, all of these scriptures, but if I'm not completely present, yeah, then it, it, I'm, it's, it registers. Yeah, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it because yeah. I'm not plugged into the same frequency. And oh, I love when you said that because I'm just like, I'm thinking about all the like simple one liners, two liners that just are an entire masterpiece with all these beautiful colors and yeah, yeah, so rich. Yeah. A friend of mine went into a seclusion retreat for like seven days or something like that. And she came out and she was kind of telling me about her experience. And she was like, her kind of sinking in moment was that it just like came in her heart. I am alive. And it's just like, if you tell that to somebody, they're going to be like, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that's kind of obvious but it was a revelation yeah you know it was it was not a small accomplishment and it's it was, not it was powerful yeah because when you said that I, like i could feel myself shifting into like let me be with her for a minute yeah. i am alive and you're just like oh my god i'm alive <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow it's amazing <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> It is profound. Definitely. Oh my gosh. To to witness it like that and then to witness it through a child being born is just like like literally a miracle. Yeah. So many things had to happen for that to happen. That's what's interesting, right? I feel like as you as you go along somewhere in the journey, um you see that uh it all is just like coming together in the most magical way, right? It's like the simplest thing. But it needed like 50 things before that to fall into place so that that could happen. And it's, it's, you start to kind of like see the miraculousness of the universal function. Mm. And not that that's happening for one person. It's like that's happening for billions of people <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> all of it's life. Like, uh, <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Some like crazy intelligence running the running the show behind the scenes right like it's It's mind-blowing really it's just i can't even fathom yeah exactly like i try and my mind just won't expand that far Mm -hmm. there's like a block Mm -hmm. it's just like no (laughs) no (laughs) (laughs) maybe later (laughs) (laughs) oh my goodness Um, what an existence wow um Yeah, I am overflowing with gratitude for for our shared time and our shared peace. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, social media links, programs? What, where where can people find you? Oh on? my, yeah. Um, I've been away from social media for quite a long time. Like I'll reshare things, yeah. and I feel like it's calling me again. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> you might see me on there, um, but you can find me at Mark, M-A-R-C, Laws, L-A-W-S, and then I-I, Mark Laws II, named after my pops. That's a whole other story, um, which is beautiful about learning learning about love and expression and relationship to father and things like that. But that's why Mark Laws II, and um, I think that's the best place to find me at now because everything else is linked to that. And, um, yeah, I feel like eventually I'll start sharing a bit more on there. Right now yeah. it's just in person or on, on Glow, so Yoga Glow. They're just called Glow now, but I teach uh, regular classes on there. Yeah. Uh, if you want to come practice with me or, yeah. yeah, just come catch the vibes, Yeah. I'm always there. I want. I, I probably shouldn't say this because maybe your sponsors will be upset, but we are, we're actually on a Zoom call one time. We were talking about you because... As we mentioned, we were privileged to have Mark on our on our teacher training. And one of the girls goes, you know, the only reason I still have my Glow account active is because of Mark. <laughs> I 
I was like, that's my, that's my man. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Um, so beautiful, beautiful, beautiful to hear um, something about your journey. Thank you so much for being here with us. Really, like, absolutely, heart, man. Felt gratitude. Yeah. Felt gratitude. Likewise. Um, and th- yeah, Glow and Instagram and um, who knows where we'll see you next. And maybe. Akasha. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll be lucky enough if the genius force is willing to have you back for another podcast yeah. sometime because just a unforgettable conversation. So much gratitude in my heart. Mm. And uh, yeah, just thank you, thank you, thank you yeah. for being here. Um, so, guys. That is the spirit of yoga. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. And uh, may you be blessed in your heart. Radiate also the natural joy and presence mm-hmm. of yoga. Uh-huh. <laughs>